who emphasis come the pillars of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. But with the one emphasis, repentance, leads itself to the 2024's theme, forgiveness and community. Repentance is about seeking forgiveness and offering forgiveness. So we're grateful for our lineup of keynoters. We have Tom Huckleberry scheduled for next Monday. Reverend Basil Hall from Lexington Avenue Baptist Church will be March 4th. Elmer Jackson will lead the keynote on March 11th. And Director Melinda Weathers from Center College will wrap up the series on March the 18th. But today we have Dr. Mickey Anders. It's my joy to introduce Dr. Anders and his wife Sarah. Sarah and Mickey live in Lexington, and they're both a treasured part of this congregation after not one, but two year-long intentional interim ministries in the recent past. Dr. Ad, Dr. Anders has pastored congregations from across a number of states over 40 years. He's achieved a Master's of Divinity degree from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He likewise attained a Doctor of Ministry degree from Southern Baptist over in Louisville. In addition to developing both congregation and individual spiritual formation as pastor, Dr. Anders has written weekly columns for a number of local newspapers, when local newspapers once existed. He served on the adjunct staff of Pikeville College, cleverly enough in Pikeville, Kentucky, at Boyce Bible School College in Louisville, Kentucky, and Arkansas Baptist College in Little Rock. That was more of a missionary stint, trying to make Christians out of all the heathens in Arkansas. <laughs> He taught, well, I'm sure somebody here is from Arkansas, I'm sure. Uh, he, he was teaching courses in Bible, church history, and pastoral ministry. In his leisure time, for grins and giggles, he served as executive director of the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce. But not unlike someone else widely known in Christian circles, he works with wood in his shop, crafting with careful skill all type of albums. And this day, we receive what he has carefully crafted to, pre to present to us. I give you Dr. Anders. There's so much to say. I'm so thrilled and moved to see all of you. And I know so many of you made special efforts to be here. Suffice it to say, I, I love... First Christian Church, and I love the people, and it was wonderful. You were so kind and wonderful to me on two occasions, and that's all I'm going to say because I've got a sermon I got to get to. <laughs> I wanted to spend our time today uh, with a profound story, not about forgiveness, but about a lack of forgiveness. What is life like? if we make the conscious choice not to forgive? What would life be like without forgiveness in our life? Our story comes from the storm-tossed deck of the whaling ship in Herman Melville's epic book, Moby Dick. I recently saw this book listed in a, in a list of 25 books that most people say they have read, but they never really finished. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that may fit you, I don't know. It's a tough read at times, and has some obscure language and writing in it, but I managed to slog through the whole thing several years ago, and the story has been an important one to me ever since. I love the famous first sentence that introduces the narrator, who is the only survivor of the story. It starts, call me Ishmael. And then I love in the first paragraph this long run-on sentence that says, Whenever I find myself growing grim about the mouth, whenever it is a damp, drizzly November in my soul, whenever I find myself involuntarily pausing before coffin warehouses and bringing up the rear of every funeral I meet, 
and especially when my hypos get such an upper hand in me that it requires a strong moral principle to prevent me from deliberately stepping into the street and methodically knocking people's hats off. <laughs> then I count it high time to go to sea as soon as I can. I love that line and have thought of it so often. It's a wonderful introduction to about the narrator, but the focus of the story is about the captain, the character of Captain Ahab. Captain Ahab stands as a towering figure of unforgiveness. He is consumed by an all-encompassing vengeance against the white whale named Moby Dick that took his leg. He stumbles about his ship, the Pequod, with his prosthetic leg, driving the ship toward its oblivion. He pushes his crew to the brink, blurring the line between captain and tyrant, all for the sake of his personal vendetta. He sees the whale as the very embodiment of evil, a, a personal affront demanding retribution. This obsession fuels his every action. It borders on madness at times. It is a story that is epic and tragic. Ahab's unwavering commitment to vengeance culminates in his demise, dragging his crew and his ship into the depths. His death serves as a chilling reminder of the destructive power of unforgiveness, consuming not only the one consumed by it, but those around him as well. Today I want to suggest that sometimes we are like Captain Ahab, like him. We cling to our hurts, letting them harden into anchors dragging us down. We ruminate on slights. We nurse our grudges and build walls of bitterness that distance us from those we love. Sometimes we just can't let go of our bitterness and our grievance. Clinging to these resentments is like clinging to a sinking ship. We drown not only ourselves, but we drag others down with us. Forgiveness is a life raft that we throw for ourselves and anyone caught in the same storm. Ahab's story is a cautionary tale about obsessing on vengeance and revenge rather than forgiveness. Without forgiveness, we too will become obsessive in our pursuit of vengeance. We too will become vengeful, driven by hatred and rage. We too will be filled with bitterness and hatred, blind to reason and ultimate bringing ruin on ourselves and others. In contrast to the obtuse language of the book of Moby Dick, I want to turn our attention to the omniscient language of the Bible. One of the key verses in the Bible on forgiveness is Ephesians 4, 32, which says, Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. I love this verse. It's equally useful in teaching a class of preschool children and in teaching a class of older people like us, like children. I want to ask if you can remember the central message of this verse. It's summed up in three words. Kind, compassionate, forgiving. Recently I thought back about my preaching to you over two interim pastorates. All told, I have probably preached to you 150 sermons. And I want to ask you today if any one of you can remember even three words from any of those sermons, probably not. 
And so today I'm worried sick that you may not remember anything I say. I just want you to remember three words. Kind, compassionate, forgiving. Can you remember? If I were to say the word be, then I want you to repeat to me those three words of this sermon. All you got to remember is three words. Let's try it. Be kind, compassionate, forgiving. That's, that's pretty good. You might remember something of this sermon. Well, this verse suggests that forgiveness includes those other key concepts of kindness and compassion. All three words are intertwined in this complexity of human relationships. Let's think about a moment about each of them and how they are related. At home in Lexington, Sarah's flower garden is beginning to grow just a bit. It's just outside of our kitchen window. We sit there every day and look and watch the flowers grow. And I'm kind of surprised that the daffodils are already about four inches tall. It's amazing how new life can grow out of the cold, cold ground already here in the middle of February. Well, I want to use this garden as a metaphor and suggest that kindness is the rich soil out of which forgiveness can grow and compassion is the sun that warms the earth to allow the flower of forgiveness to blossom. The first word is kind. Kindness involves being friendly, being generous, considerate toward other people. It's a quality of showing goodwill toward others. Acts of kindness are benevolent actions, kind actions that are there for the well-being of others around us. The second word is compassion. Many translations of the verse use the hyphenated word, like in the King James, tender-hearted. Don't you like that? Tender-hearted. Be tender-hearted. I might call it today warm-hearted, because in our analogy, I want to suggest that compassion is the sun that warms the soil of kindness, allowing for the germination of the flower of forgiveness. Compassion involves a deep awareness of the suffering of others. It involves that word empathy. I have been shocked to learn that there are some people who simply have no empathy for others' pain and suffering. God calls us to be compassionate. Acts of kindness and compassion create this positive atmosphere in relationships. When we've got kindness and compassion, it becomes easier to forgive one another and when there are conflicts and misunderstandings. Our third word is forgiveness. Forgiveness is the act of pardoning someone for their mistakes or their offenses. It involves letting go of that resentment, of that anger, of that desire for revenge. Forgiveness is a conscious choice to release the negative feelings and offer a second chance of healing and reconciliation. Forgiveness is not just passive surrender, erasing of a slate. It's a brave journey, a deliberate act of courage. It involves acknowledging our pain, understanding its source, but choosing to release its grip. Desmond Tutu said, forgiveness is not condoning what was done, but freeing oneself from being a prisoner of resentment. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. What about that last phrase, as God in Christ has forgiven you? The scripture reminds us that our capacity to forgive mirrors the forgiveness that we have experienced from God. We are forgiven, not because we deserve it, 
but because it is in the essence of God's very nature and forgiveness that comes from God gives us the strength and the courage and the audacity to extend that kind of forgiveness to someone else. My assigned title is Forgiveness with a Friend, a community of two. Let's think about that community of two. Picture forgiveness as a sacred space, a community of two souls coming together in a spirit of kindness and compassion. In this kind of sacred space, hearts open, wounds heal, and the grace of forgiveness transforms our path into an opportunity of growth. It is in this sacred community that we encounter the beauty of forgiveness. Imagine a world where forgiveness flows freely, bringing us together with <coughs> kindness and compassion. Do you remember the three words? Be kind, kind. compassionate, compassionate. Forgiving. forgiving. This truth isn't just contained in ancient tales and religious scriptures. We can look to the unlikely heroes of the Disney movie, Frozen, the characters Elsa and Anna. Estranged by fear and misunderstanding, their sisterhood is fractured like ice under the weight of the past. And through acts of vulnerability and selflessness, they chip away at the frozen walls, choosing forgiveness rather than isolation. Poor Elsa blames herself for accidentally harming her sister Anna with her magic during their childhood. It's led to their estrangement. Elsa is unable to forgive herself for hurting her sister. So she isolates herself out of fear and shame, believing that she's a danger to those that she loves. Perhaps it's often true of us as well that our greatest struggle with forgiveness is forgiving ourselves. That may be the hardest kind of all. Forgiveness is not just a gift we give to somebody else, but it's a gift we give to ourselves. It liberates us from the prison of bitterness, frees us to embrace the present, opens the door to the future with hope. In the climactic battle of Frozen, in the scene there, Hans is revealed as a villain who lunges at Elsa with his sword, aiming to strike her down and seize the throne for himself. And just as the blade is about to connect, her sister Anna, throws herself in front of her sister, taking the blow. Her sacrifice in this climactic scene, choosing to protect Elsa from Hans' attack, is the ultimate act of forgiveness. It proves that despite their pain of separation, Anna loves her sister, and her love is unconditional. This selfless act symbolizes Anna's complete forgiveness of Elsa, and it serves as a catalyst, breaking the icy grip on her own heart and melting the spell that Elsa had unwittingly cast upon her and upon the kingdom itself. This movie serves as a powerful message about the importance of letting go of hurt, embracing vulnerability, and choosing love over resentment. The most famous song from Frozen is entitled Let It Go. You all can hear the melody playing in your mind now, sung by Elsa. It's really a song about her leaving it all behind and also letting her secret powers out. But the title fits our message so well today. Let it go. Don't cling to resentment. Revenge. Retribution, hatred, let it go. Open your hand and allow your heart to melt, your wounds to heal. Open your hand and allow healing and reconciliation to come. The journey of Elsa and Anna 
mirrors our own experience with the miracle of forgiveness. Every act of forgiveness, however small, melts the frost around our hearts, paving the way for warmth and reconciliation, a whispered apology, a listening ear, a shared lie, laugh. These are the bridges that we build over resentment and revenge. They are the stepping stones to this community of two with a sacred space that is restored and renewed. So brothers and sisters, do not be like Captain Ahab, harboring resentment, revenge, retribution, and hatred, but be instead like Elsa and Anna. Let it go. Let go of those negative, self-destructive emotions. Let's chip away at the ice, melt the barriers, rebuild our communities, one heart at a time. And now I've preached a whole sermon from me for you. And I'm wondering if you remember even three words of what I've said. Be kind, compassionate, forgiving. For Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another. Compassionate. Forgiving one another. For God in Christ has forgiven you. Let's pray. Oh God, we confess that we are hypocrites when we come to the subject of forgiveness because far too often we are like Captain Ahab, harboring our bitterness, sometimes proud of our bitterness and vengefulness. Help us to hear the words of Scripture and to open our hearts to kind, kindness, to compassion, and to forgiveness because we remember that you have so graciously forgiven us. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed to go back to work. <laughs>